Hey guys, Andy42 here and today I'm going to talk about the component drag. So the component drag is our most universal component and it's so powerful. Really in love with this one. So it's not just for opening and closing drawers like in this example here, but basically you can use it for every movement. So we use it for this lever here. We use it for radial movement like this valve and also all the little buttons here, all these little knobs you can turn around and the water tap. All of this is created with the component track and you don't need any complicated parent-child hierarchy anymore. So let's start with a very simple example here to show you how you get started with this one. So we are going to recreate the drawer and first of all, of course, we need the static mesh. So let's add it in here and also add our component drag. With the key, you can define in which direction you want to move or rotate the object. So for example, we can move it in the linear X, like in the default one, and we will choose this later on. But for now, let's choose something different here. If we want, for example, roll this on the x-axis, let's reset this, we can select our rotation roll. And this way we are now able to roll around the x-axis. Let's keep the setting default. We will talk about them later on. Let's start with the drag tag. So this one is really important because the component needs to know which mesh it should handle. So in this case, there's only one, so we add the tag there. And we also need a ledge component. We have a different tutorial about this one. Also, just make sure the drag tag is the same you used previously. And all the other settings will be explained in the ledge component. So let's keep them like they are right now. One thing we need to add is the ledge tag to the mesh. So now we have both text there, the drag and the ledge one. One thing to keep in mind, your static mesh needs the socket with the name attach point. If everything is set up, I can now rotate the mesh around the x-axis in a predefined amount. So we're going to talk about those later on. Let's set it to linear x, so the way we actually want this to move. And now we can move it in and out. It's a little bit too far, we will fix this now. First of all, we start with the snap type. So we have three different. Snap to segment will snap to the closest segment the moment you let go. And all three of our snapping types can be watched here. So we have snap to segment, we have the reset one, it will just reset. And of course, this is also true for this slider here or this valve, because they are all using the drag component. And the last one is our free movement. It just stays at the position you let go with a nice ease out animation like you can see here. Okay, these are our three snap types. The start position is the position you want to start. And if you change this, remember to click the update actor on the top left. We have snapping speed and follow speed. So this are just the speed settings and the selection rule Ansgar talked about in the component select. So you can toggle extremes or you can modulo up or down. So just watch the component select tutorial for this one. We also have a toggle option. So this is useful. We use it for our buttons. If we want to implement a toggle button that will only trigger every second time. So the first one is on, the second time is off. And under the section set, you can add your own sections. You can add as many as you want. Let's stick with two of them. We can give them a name and they also have a bool variable set, which can be set to true or to false. So let's change it to 50. And now you can see I can only drag it 50 centimeters. And this is closer to the way we want it. We can also trigger different actors with the track component. And we talked about this in our tutorial about listen to trigger. And you can see now I can use the draw to actually trigger the light on and off. And actually you, you can create a trigger out of everything you want as long as you can drag it. The trigger also owner, 
is a cool little feature. In order for this to work, we need the listen to trigger component. And we also talk about this in the listen to trigger tutorial. Let's give you a fast example here. So I'm just printing out a string here for the percent and one for the actual name, but we are not using this one here right now. So just wanted to show you how you can split this. And now you can see if I track, I get my position in percent from zero to one. And with this, you can really create a lot of advanced mechanics. And you can also see the naming in and out is working perfectly fine. This was the trigger single. Let's create a simple example to showcase what you can actually do here. And don't forget to check out our Patreon. So I am going to remap the percent to value between one and three. And I'm going to use this float value to scale the actual mesh of the draw. Of course, this is not the most practical thing to do. Just wanted to give you a quick example. So now the draw is triggering itself. And while he's triggering itself and I uh, move it around, it's also scaling. So you get this nice little effect here. And you can see the lights are still being triggered by that. So it's a really powerful component you have there. And I'm really excited to see what you will come up with. So what's even more cool is the possibility you can add different keys to one component. So for example, I can move it in the X axis, but also on the C axis. And now if I move it around, I can move it up and down and left and right until I hit the sections I set there. And you can make a combination with all of them. Of course, some of them will not work very great together. And this really depends on their settings. So just go in there, play around with them and see what you like. So I'm also going to add the rotation roll, but only 45 degrees. And now if I play, I can move it up, down, left, right, and also roll it around the X axis. So you can give the user very specific ways of interacting with your objects. And all of these you see in this map here are examples of the track component, different things we came up with, we wanted to show you. And go in there, check them out, how we set those up. And all of them are just static meshes without any complicated parent-child hierarchy or anything like this. So here's a nice example of up, down, left, right. And on the right side, we have the same. But if I move it up and down, it will automatically rotate. And we also use the listen to trigger and trigger owner for that. So we have the trigger constant and we are just setting the relative rotation. And the track component is just set to linear X. So this way, if I move it up and down, it will automatically rotate the static mesh. The same goes for the car. If I move the car around, I rotate the wheels. And another thing you can do is add a spline to your draw or anything you want to track. And you can set the component drag to spline or spline with rotation. And this way, if you modify the spline mesh here, it will now follow the spline. You can also add multiple meshes and components to your Blueprint Actor. So in this example, we add the default cube here. So just a static mesh with no logic, hit compile and save. And now if you hit play, you can see only the draw we set up is moving and the cube stays in its position. And you can also go in there and add your own component drag and component ledge for the cube. Just make sure to use the right text. So let's use 
the track underscore cube for the cube one. And don't forget to set the tag also in our static mesh. So we add a tag here on the top. And we do the same for the component ledge. Let's put the right tracking identifier in there and create a unique identifier for the ledge tag and add it here. And now the drag component and ledge component knows which static mesh is meant. The default cube don't have a socket, so let's quickly create it, name it attach point, and now everything should work. I can now independently move the draw or the cube. So the cube I can move up and down, and the draw is set to its spline. So you can create really powerful combinations inside a single blueprint. So the cool thing is every component now has its own unique name we created, that's the identifier. And with this, I can do a switch on name. So even if I just use the same listen to trigger, I can separate the functionality. So in this case, only something happens if I drag the cube around. In this case, I'm going to use the percent value to scale the draw. And this will result in something that I can move the cube around. And if I move it up and down, you can see the draw is being scaled up or down. So a very great example you can check out yourself is the spot we created here. All of these buttons use the component drag, but they use the rotation value of the controller or the hand to actually rotate the button. And we have created some examples of them and all are inside one single blueprint with their different components. So just wanted to create a simple showcase for you that you can open and check out how we created them. And the cool thing is because it's all one blueprint, you can just grab it and move it around and everything works the way you would expect it to be. So thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.